Welcome to Keller's Coder. I literally gave the shirt off my back to buy this. The Vectrex. Motherfucker! Well, actually I didn't. I was really lucky to get an awesome deal on this near mint Vectrex. I paid 288 euros, that is including shipping. And the only thing that was wrong with it is that the plastic is a bit dried out. So uh, let's restore the plastic and then let's create our own joystick because uh, these are rarer than gold these days and it's still good and I want to keep it that way. Uh, I also want a clicky 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 joystick. Those are his last famous words. Potential meter joysticks. So uh, let's jump in and have some Vectrex retro fun. The Vectrex is one of these weird beasts. It doesn't draw pixels, it's a vector display. So basically it's an electro ray that you uh, redirect over the phosphor screen and by the retention of vision it creates an image. And you have these overlays to basically colorize the black and white image and to give it a bit more contrast. At a certain point in England, in around 1985, Woolworths sold them for 40 pounds each. Now they can fetch up in the US to around $1,100. So if you get one, it's a good investment. But make sure to get one where the shell is intact. I had an offer on one that the shell was broken. I landed that offer and this one popped up. So I said, well, I canceled that offer. I buy this one. Because repairing a shell is always a hard, tough job. Now, I said they were made on the cheap, and a lot of you notice that if you uh, listen to a Vectrex, you hear this buzzing sound. This one is a later model. That is not the buzzing sound, that is the extra analog playing sound. This one doesn't have that. I actually bought an amplifier to do the mod, but I don't need that. Now there is one really fragile piece, and that is something that we're also going to address in this video. That is this power on slash volume button. Uh, they tend to break. And it's not a part that you can source again and uh, replace. So I will set it to the volume that I like, a little bit louder, and then we're going to insert a little switch on the power cable so we can just toggle it on and off. So we don't need to touch this as much anymore. Let's restore the plastic. So first let us focus on these weird suspicious white stains. So uh, spray it on there, nice and thick, and rub it in. Yeah, mm -mm -mm. look at that. Yeah, you would think it will keep the shine, no it doesn't. Um, it will actually soak into the plastic and then become uh, sort of dull again. Uh, if you want this sort of shine, which is unnatural by the way, then you would actually need to uh, spray the case with a nice uh, gloss lacquer. And these gashes, yeah, they won't come out with some polish. Uh, I will need to either use some shoe polish or uh, some oil paint. Yeah, that's also a very deep gash. Now you could respray the whole case, but it is in such a good state generally that, yeah, for these user gashes, I mean, it's 41 years old. We just uh, use some shoe polish or some uh, oil paint. It's nice and black, it's textured, so that will work and fill up those slots nicely. So uh, let's focus on the other side. Yeah, here are also some weird, suspicious white marks. So spray me again and rub it in. <laughs> that feels good. Oh, there is a big gash on the front. We need to fill that in with some oil paint or shoe polish as well, because that actually gets hard and gets rid of it. Yeah, this uh, this looks nice. Uh, it's relubricated, uh, reinvigorated. Oh, that was a bit premature, but uh, let's uh, polish that as well. Look at how this stuff recovers it. Yeah, it's really, really nice. And I ended up doing this uh, three times to really get uh, that dried plastic nice and moist again. 
Sometimes uh, you just need to reapply yourself. Yeah, polish, polish, polish. <laughs> and this stuff really smells nice, to be honest. And when I say this stuff, it's Maddox Automobile Detail. Really awesome. Just look at the result after the first go. It looks really pristine. Thank you, Maddox. I can say that Mr. Maddox is an expert in getting 40-year-old things nice and moist again. Now this joystick has a lot of scratches because it moves up and down the table surface. So let's uh, give that the oil paintment treatment. Now this is a prop master secret that we used in the TV world a lot when you had scratches on props and you want to get rid of them we just put some oil paint on there or a dark wax or shoe polish and just rub it in and the great thing is that oil paints and shoe polish get hard and that will actually fill in these superficial scratches but of course it will only work on black in this case so you first rub it in hard and then you just buff it out because yeah it's an oil and you can see that the scratches are still there but they're just not as visible if you really want to get rid of the scratches you have to sand it you have to go to town with some uh, filler but yeah this fills just enough so that it looks used but it's not yeah old really buff it in into circles that really makes sure that it gets into that surface scratch and then uh, you just rub the excess off and what is in the scratches stays there and this is a really fast and very very reliable method to restore uh, surface scratches and when this is dry, and it takes about 24 hours to dry when it's oil paint, shoe polish a bit quicker, I will just dust it with a, a nice little matte clear coat so that we protect it for a bit longer. But look at that, it doesn't look like this anymore. I can actually see my face in it, and that's not a progress. So let's tend to those big gashes, some oil paint on a rack, dab it on there, and dab it in. The thing is to push, not to rub. Rubbing, uh, well, doesn't really get the same results. And I'm really feathering it out, as you can see. Now this fatty stain that will actually dry in eventually. And there we do the same, we dab it on there and we dab it in. Oh, bold spot. Now this gash was almost too deep to actually uh, use the shoe polish or the oil paint treatment. So you see I really kick it on there and really push it in. But eventually it did work. It covered it nicely and I actually feathered it out more on the whole side. And this really gets hard eventually. So that's going to stay there probably longer than uh, the machine will be alive. Look at that. And again, this fatty residue that is actually that is wet and it will actually dry in. So you won't see that. And even if you did, then it just looks like somebody grabbed it. <laughs> it's, it's better than a nice big white gash. Now a mod that most people want to do is the buzz off mod because the speaker actually buzzes because the amplifier is right next to high power circuitry. So I bought myself a nice little Fischtaker amplifier to put it somewhere away from the high voltage and just to amplify the signal from the board. And this is actually a cheaper solution than the commercial buzz off mod, which is pretty much the same thing, except this is a better amplifier and only costs 11 euros. This actually is a two channel amplifier that goes up to 40 kilohertz. But uh, yeah, I won't be needing this because I have a new revision which doesn't buzz. Now let's create our own Vectrex Arcade joystick from off-the-shelf parts. You can buy these online, but they run anywhere to 60 pounds, it's expensive. So I got this out, the star for my first Calis Coder episode, the 100 meter dash world record. 
and I try to stick it in, but it doesn't fit. My joystick doesn't fit. And I think the reason is that Factrex actually has a sort of beveled layout so that perhaps another joystick that could potentially break it because this uses plus and minus five volt cannot fit. So let's bevel the hell out of this. We get a sander and we just start beveling the edges, sending them away gradually. And every now and then uh, I fit it and then you get a bit of a mark, then you know where to uh, send. So just do a test fit. It now actually slides in, but there is a little indentation there. And that means we can uh, send that off. And gradually I work my way into a nice beveled joystick port connector. It's like sculpting with sandpaper. Yeah, awesome. Now I give it a nice little wet sand to get rid of the deep scratches. And then we do the oil paint treatment here as well. Really rub it in there. Try not to get too much on the connector itself because that will wear off with the in and out, in and out, in and out. But yeah, that looks good. We're getting there. And eventually I let it dry and hit it with a clear coat and it looks like this. Yeah, nobody will see that we actually sculpt this with a sander. This looks nice. I bought a cheap joystick kit and a Jeep Arcade joystick chassis from Amazon and they run together about 20 euros. Then online on the effort testing Reddit I found this schematic that I'm going to implement. I find that 3.3k resistors a bit weird because if I look at the schematic of the Vectrex it is 4.7k so I'm not really sure. But I will bend the resistor leads in place and just solder them straight onto the joystick switches. In that post they actually used a bit of perf board but you can just solder these very very easily floating as you can see over here. I already put the buttons in and wired the buttons up as well so let's give it a test. Well there's a definite bug in this standard schematic that we found online that we used to uh, make this. Because if you go up, it is actually uh, up left. If you go down, it's actually right left. But even worse, if you go diagonally, that works. But if you go diagonally down or up, it resets the Vectrex. I looked at this schematic many, many times. I know I wired it correctly, so... I wonder what is going on here. We'll measure these voltages but I think that maybe because this is a very late revision that maybe the network is kind of different I'm not sure yet it's really puzzling me so in one last ditch attempt I changed the 3.3 case that they show in that schematic with 4.7 case because when I look at the vector schematics I actually see that they have a 10k and a 4.7k so I hope that will actually center it a bit more and I still don't know if the diagonal will actually be fixed or still reset the Vectrex so uh, let's give it a try and otherwise this video ends here and I will need to uh, think up of my own circuit how to actually properly do this uh, especially with this latest revision model of Vectrex so the joystick tester is on the screen Will there be magic smoke? Oh, oh it's so scary. Now we got a bit more, uh, well, sort of center. No, still, this does not center it at all. This really, and the diagonal, yeah, that still resets it. That is bad news. So for now, we have to leave it at that. So next up, the power mod. There is one mod that I really want to do and that is putting the switch in between the power cable so that you don't need to handle this switch all the time because that switch is really fragile and one that you cannot get off the shelf anymore. 
So it's safer to switch your system on and off like this and have this set to a nice, comfortable volume. Even I can fuck this up. I hope. Well, technically, I didn't fuck up. The schematic fucked up. But yeah. So here I wire it up. And here in Europe, we have a standard that the face, the brown wire, is on the left. So I wire it up according to those standards. And that is to the left in relation to the socket. So in this case, if you put the socket in, the face will be on the left. And make sure that the strain relief is only on the outside mantle of your wires, not on the wires itself. At school, when there was not a little bow in the wire and the strain relief was not exactly on the outside insulation, the teacher would go off on you. Oh my god. Click, and yes, the vectric turns on. And then the finished result. Look at that. All the gash is gone. It shines. This big gash is gone. Look at that. I even uh, gave it a little dusting of a uh, satin lacquer on there. To really bring out the texture again. Yeah, I'm very happy with it. It looks awesome. She is ready to be played. So there you have it. A nicely yeah, refurbished is a grand word. We just did the plastics, Vectrex with that little uh, switch mod in there to save that power button. And unfortunately, yeah, the joystick button didn't work. I found a schematic online, which I already found a bit dodgy with the 3.3K resistors. And it only partially works. That goes to show that you should not always believe what's on the internet. Except for aliens, UFOs and corrupt politicians. That's, that's all true. So we definitely will be revisiting the joystick because I want my clicky 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 joystick. So I need to think about it and find the schematics of this latest revision to really know how to make a proper mod myself. But yeah, I am really happy with this. And it's a classic. So, it belongs in my house. I'm a classic. So I hope you learned something and see you in the next one.